are back at it again, making waves here at the DefSec Atlantic show. Yes, we the are. The day is kind of wrapping up. We've had some amazing conversations today. I'm really looking forward to our next conversation and uh, hearing a little bit about your journey. Colin, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Well, thank you, gentlemen. It is a pleasure to be here. So my name is Colin Cook, and I'm the president and CEO of the Canadian Marine Industries and Shipbuilding Association. So we're a relatively new operation. We've been around for about two and a half years, and we are coming in the heritage of the old Canadian Shipbuilders Association. Okay. That was a body that was around since the end of the Second World War till the early zeros. Right. And it kind of foundered and sank and drifted away around 10, 15 years back. And so two, three years back, we started to realize that we need a national voice. We need somebody who's pulling together for the entire industry. We need somebody to stand up for Canadian businesses in the marine sector um, to pull them together, to make them play nice in the sandbox, and to ensure that there are Canadian solutions for vessels in Canada. Brilliant. Brilliant. This has got to be an exciting time for you then, it because is. there's a lot going on. It is, there's, there's more than a little, that, yeah. but there could be more. There could but be more. Could okay. be more. <laughs> and we're hoping to make that happen through the conversations. So talk to me a little bit about the growth in the sector right now. I mean, Jerry and I just had the pleasure last week of walking in the back end of a shipyard, walking out the other end on a brand new ship, looking sailors in the eyes that were on board that ship. It's fascinating stuff. Tell us a little bit about the growth from your perspective. It is just amazing. It's it, there are so many good things that are going on in, across the country, from sea to sea, almost to sea. Um, we have uh, Coast Guard vessels coming down the ways. We've got uh, naval vessels coming down the ways, and increasingly, we're looking at opportunities in the ferry sector. Really um, interesting. Our yeah. industry has had its ups and downs ever since the end of the Second World War. Actually, something that most people don't know is that we were proportionally, we were building. Um, enough ships or as many ships as the Americans on a proportional basis. Really? So we had 15 yards in the Second World War cranking out vessels like you wouldn't believe. There was one date, uh, it was a couple of weeks back in, I believe it was 1943, where Canada launched 12 ships on one day. On one day. There was a destroyer, there was a frigate, there was a corvette, there were tankers, there were freighters, there were minesweepers. Wow. We had incredible capability and capacity back then right. and there have been periods in the last you know 60 70 years where we've been pretty strong but after the Halifax class an right. awful lot of things disappear right over the last decade we've been starting to see a resurgence uh, a stronger economy or a stronger sector a whole lot more companies engaged and what's really exciting are those small ones that you two gentlemen have never heard of who are blazing new trails who are doing new technology who've got the potential to take us all to new levels right so there's great stuff happening see to see to see yeah Colin we build good ships in this country do we not we do yeah we I do mean, with good steel with good components um, they're greener than in a whole lot of places um, and they look after your neighbors or folks just down the way um, who are building them for you who can repair them for you who will look after them with you right. so yes we do we build good ships. you know we did tour the Irving shipbuilding and seeing a one two ton piece of steel then put into what did they call them blocks or cues or, yeah, yeah. To 130 ton cranes, it was absolutely overwhelming to me walking through that, and I'm just inspired by you know the whole shipbuilding industry. Yeah, well, I, I love it too, Ray, because these are like you know you walk through those shipyards and you see the ships uh, in the waterfront, but what they represent to me are good jobs. People raise families yep. on those ships, right? I mean, yep. these are the type of things that fuel our economy. Those big three big yards and big shipyards have at least a thousand companies behind them. Right. So yeah, you might think of Irving, C-SPAN, Davy, but behind them is that supply chain. And these guys are small cities. You know, yeah. the yeah. Irving Yard you guys visited had thousands of workers. Yeah. 1,500. They want to ramp up to 3,000 in total. Exactly. That's their goal, their, That's their objective. That's exciting for it's a guy like me. I'm in business development for 30 years, Colin. Yeah. Holy shit, to go to 3,000? Yeah. Wow. And so the challenge, that's one of the challenges of our community, is to make sure that we've got enough people, right. enough trained, right. qualified, you know, good 
people who are interested in this sector, willing to do the training and then willing to stay in. So that would be one of your mandates. It Absolutely. Is mandates. Yeah. So, that's a good mandate. It's 100 percent, but Colin, this is going to take some serious effort to get into the hearts and minds yep. of the academic communities, even before they get into post-secondary. Yeah. Starting early and saying shipbuilding is an opportunity here. Well, that's it, because I, I talked to you two gentlemen, you've been there, done that, and seen it. Yeah. Um, if you go to somebody from Flin Flon, um, yeah. they have no clue what the ocean looks like, nor that there are opportunities there, nor do they really care. Yeah. Um, they don't appreciate that 90% of the stuff that you consume touches in some way, shape, or form right. stuff that's come across the ocean. And that's fine, because they have their own economic drivers, right, in Absolutely. those communities. But some of those communities need a little bit of uh, new opportunity. Uh, certainly the oil and gas sector out in uh, Western Canada, there's a few extra people there who've got some really neat skill sets that oh, shipyards could use. Um, these guys are great welders. Yeah. They're great pipe fitters. They're great a whole bunch of fill in the blanks. Yeah. And if they were willing to move yeah. to where the ships can be built, because we don't build a lot of ships in Calgary. Yeah. Uh, you know, we'd like to, but you know. shipping them <laughs> yeah, would be a challenge. The logistics are a little off. <laughs> But we've got some really good, capable people in this country, and there are some industries that are having leaner times. Yep. Ours is not, so perhaps there's opportunities to cross-pollinate. Colin, you uh, jump right into what it is that you do quickly, and I know why you did, because you're passionate about it. I want to go back a step, go back in time a little bit. When did you get bitten by this desire to be immersed in shipbuilding? Where did this come from? Uh, like everything else, you blame your parents. Okay. <laughs> so I was born in Halifax, and I had two ex-Navy officers as parents. Oh, wow. um, Mom was a Navy nurse, Dad was a Navy engineer. And so growing up here in Halifax, anything that's gray and floated, I was in. I, yeah. that, that was just exciting. I mean, I saw the Bredore, I um, out in the, uh, in the harbor. I saw the Bonaventure. It was like, it was cool as a kid looking at this stuff and moved away to Ottawa, but have always had a passion for things that float. So when the opportunity came up a few years ago to marry my background, which is more in the financial world, but also in the not-for-profit world, right. to building something that can help everybody, well, actually, there was an ass a big asset that I was bringing to the table, which is I didn't come from any of these companies. Right. And instead, I can come from the pan-Canadian approach. And one of the things I've always said is, I don't care who wins a deal, as long as it's a Canadian company and as long as it was a fair deal. So if there That's are opportunities out fair. there, guys, you all need to, to fight for it. May the best uh, company win. Yeah. And I want to see a Canadian solution. Yeah. And then I want another deal so that the company that didn't win the first one gets a good crack at the second one. <laughs> Colin, you, you've got a, a wonderful perspective on, on this, the uh, National Ship Procurement Strategy. I, I commend you for the way you so clearly articulated the vision. It's, it's a beautiful thing to listen to. One final question I have for you. You're proudly wearing an anchor on your lapel. Well, tell me what that means. So I you can say what I did. <laughs> Despite the fact that I've been involved, tell, you tell, tell everyone. I, won't, I didn't know what it was. I won't throw you to the wolves. Yes, I won't bus, throw I you care. to the wolves. I won't point out that you didn't know what it was. Neither did he admit it. I won't point out that I had neither anyway. one of you. Anyways, <laughs> it's a pin that showed that I was a participant in the Canadian Leaders at Sea program, Royal Canadian Navy program, to take. Uh, community leaders, for want of a better expression, from across the country to introduce them to what the Canadian Navy does and the people who, um, who are part of that you know, storied institution and gives us a chance to see what they do. And for me, it was like on-the-job training. I spent eight days um, in the Arctic uh, aboard the Ville de Québec with an incredible bunch of crew. They were wonderful to me. And because I ended up, for logistical reasons, having two back-to-back -back sessions. The first one, I went through the regular program, and the second one, they said, well, you've already done it, so <laughs> set up your own program, <laughs> which I did, which meant I, you know, did whatever. I talked to the sonar guys, That's I talked awesome. to the comms guys, I talked to all the different people, and for me, I'm probably the only one that wandered around a Canadian frigate saying, all right, who built that? Oh, who built that? Amazing. So, so it was great fun. Yeah. It was a great program. If you ever have the opportunity to participate in Canadian Leaders at Sea, you'd be silly not to. Uh, it must have been amazing to look in the eyes of those young people that are on those ships and serving our country. 
Fascinating folks, eh? Brilliant. Love, yeah. love each and every one of them. Yeah. And the, the, the freakiest thing, the weirdest thing was because I had two ex-Navy officer parents, um, I've always had great respect for rank. Yeah. And there I am on the bridge of a Canadian warship at sea in the Arctic, and the captain, the CEO, was calling me sir. <laughs> was, okay, this yeah. is strange. That's uncomfortable. Um, that's uncomfortable because yeah, you're the boss. Yeah. <laughs> you're the boss. They call in a wonderful conversation and a great perspective on what's happening here. And you can feel the optimism that you have for what's going on. And I love it. Let's keep this as Canadian as we possibly can. And let's grow these technologies right here in Canada and then export them around the world. Yeah. I mean, Canada can and will be global leaders in a lot of the areas that are happening right in this room here today. Absolutely. Some of our members that are here um, and some of our members to be are doing some pretty impressive stuff. Our big challenge on that front is to make sure that our Canadians get, um, our Canadian companies, especially the cutting edge ones, get integrated somehow or other into our Canadian system right. so that they become part of the solutions of our Coast Guard, our Navy, our ferries, and ultimately our civilian vessels. So that's a big challenge, but that's, that's the pot of gold for all of us at the end of the rainbow is to make sure that Canadian opportunities exist for Canadian companies. Well, you know, I, I'm going to say, uh, when I was doing my business degree at Memorial University, a guest speaker came in, and you know what he said? Sales is the engine that drives the economy. And I'm like, right then and there, for 30 years I've been part of that engine. Well, listening to you talk, and you know, you, you are spearheading the Marine Industry and Shipbuilding Association, what an economic driver that is. So, thank you. In many, many, many communities, and by extension, right across the country, for all of these companies that support that, that build the widgets, that do the software, that do the engineering, it doesn't matter where you are. You no. might have a two days drive to get to the coast, and yet you are doing some specialty work that is going to make things better for our sailors, um, for our uh, sea people of all shapes and sizes. Um, uh, well, there you have it. Another great edition of Making Waves. Colin there from Halifax, son of two naval officers. <laughs> You're making a difference, mate. Thanks for your service. Thank you for helping. Thank you for supporting us. Cheers.